Hey guys, welcome to this quick tutorial where I will show you how to use a Mixamo animation for creating a stable diffusion video. We will be using Blender for creating our starting animation and then feeding this animation into automatic 11.11 batch image to image using ControlNet as a guidance tool. For those who don't know Mixamo, it's a free website from Adobe where you can download high quality 3D animations and use them in your own 3D software. Just create a free account and log in into this page where you can find a great variety of 3D models and animations for your own use. So here we are on the starting screen. On the right hand side you can see the standard 3D character which we are going to use. And on the left hand side you can find all the animations available. We are looking for a dancing animation. So we type in dance into the search bar. And then we click on the animation we want to use. I think I'm going with a samba dance. It's a long animation and it's looped. So you can use it over and over again if you need a longer sequence. Click on the download button. Choose FBX as the format uh, with skin and 24 frames per second because that's the frame rate we want to use in Blender. Once that's done, we are finished with Mixamo and we will switch right over to Blender. If you don't know Blender, it's a great 3D modeling software, which might look a bit intimidating at first, but after all, it's not that difficult to learn. So here we are at the default scene of Blender with the light, camera and cube. Let's delete the cube and let's import our Mixamo animation. So go to File, Import, FBX and search for the file we downloaded before. Here we go. So here we have our model with our animation. Now click on the run button to see if it works. Seems okay. What we want to do next is opening a new window. Move your mouse to the upper right part until you see a plus sign and drag the window out. Next we adjust our render properties. We are going to use the EV rendering engine because it's very fast. And we select ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflections. Next let's adjust the scene we want to render. You can use any size you like, but I'm going for a 1K square image, so 124 by 124. Next click on the camera button on the right window, which will show you how the rendered scene will look like. Then select the camera in the right upper window and change the camera position and rotation until you're happy. Try to bring the animation object as close to the camera as possible because it will produce better results later in stable diffusion. Now hit the camera icon on the right part of the screen and adjust the focal length. I think we are good for now. Let's switch to rendered mode on the right upper part of the screen. We still need some background image in order to get better results later in stable diffusion. So I'll just Go to Pixabay and download some random image. It's also a free site with lots of great free stuff. I'm looking for a city scene. And I'm just going to use the first one. It doesn't matter much what background you use, as long as it vaguely resembles the video you want to create in Stable Diffusion. So let's download it. We don't need high quality. Let's go back to Blender and import the background image. Go to File, Import, Images as Planes and select the picture we just downloaded. Let's adjust the size, rotation and location of the image 
so it can be a perfect background for our scene. And once that's done, let's select Render, Render Image from the upper menu. It's not a perfect scene, but I think that's all what we need. Next, let's go to the Render menu. And all we need to do is selecting the folder where we want to store our video animation. Let's call it Blender Render. Let's select the armature and see how long the animation will be. It's about 476 frames. So let's enter that value to the end of the animation. And then we are almost done. Go to the Render menu and select Render Animation. It's going to take one or two minutes to render the whole animation. And once it's finished, you will find 476 image files in your Blender Render folder. So that's all we need to do in Blender. And we can switch over to our automatic 11.11 web UI. I'll leave a link down below how to install it and run it on your PC or Mac. Let's click on image to image because that's what we are going to need. Then find your Blender render folder with your images and drag anyone into your web UI. Next we need to enter a prompt to describe what kind of scene we want to render. A beautiful young woman with long red hair dancing in the street of New York. Let's select a batch count of four, which means four samples will be created and then hit the generate button. Let's take a look at the images and choose the one we like most. I think that one is good. Then hit the green recycle button to get the seed of this image. You will notice that the pose of the image which we just created differs quite a lot from our input image. And to change that, we will use the control net extension. If you don't see it on your screen, you need to install it first. I will leave a link in the description where to get it and how to install it. You will also notice that I'm not using the standard model, which you can, but a custom model from Civit AI called Deliberate, which in my view gives better results. Here's the website. You can download the model for free and copy it into your models folder. I'll leave a link down below where and how to get these models. When you find an image that you like, Click on the information button, copy the positive and negative prompts and paste them into the prompt fields of your web UI Automatic 11.11. This might give you a better look and feel for the final image and animation. You can also add some more positive and negative prompts. Just make some test renders until you think that the scene is fine. Now let's enable control net. You can stay with the standard settings, but you need to select a preprocessor and a model. I'm going with a depth map as a preprocessor and same for the model. Because in a city scene, a depth map could be the right choice. Just play around with it and you will see what fits your animation best. Let's make another test render. It's not perfect, but you can see that the pose exactly matches now. Now we don't just want to have a single image, but an image animation. So you need to select the batch button. As an input directory, we enter the path to the Blender render folder, where all our images are located. And for the output directory, we enter a location where our stable diffusion images should be stored. If that folder doesn't exist, it will be automatically created by Automatic 11.11. You might also want to play a bit more with the settings like sampling steps, CFG scale and denoising strength, uh, which have great influence to the final renders. But for this tutorial, I will just leave them as they are, hit generate 
and wait for maybe an hour until the animation render is finished. Okay, we are done. You can see that a new folder has been created with 476 images created by Stable Diffusion. You could now import this image sequence into your video editing software, refine the output even more, but I'm just going to use QuickTime to convert the image sequence into a movie and see how it looks. I'm also adding an audio track and we are done for this tutorial. It's still a bit flickery, so you might want to uh, reduce the denoising strength before rendering, but overall it's okay, I think. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments and see you next time.